Hello, my name is Elena, and welcome to the Vanderbilt Institute of Nanoscience and Engineering, or VINCE for short. VINCE has a wide range of instruments and facilities that are used by Vanderbilt researchers like me and other collaborators. Today, we're going to be entering the VINCE clean room to learn about the process of photolithography. Have you ever wondered how smartphones and electronics can be made to fit inside your pocket? How do we fit billions of silicon transistors together on a little chip? An important part of the process is photolithography. The word photolithography is a collection of Greek roots, photo, which means light, litho, which means stone, and graphy, which means to write. Together, they translate to writing on stone with light. Today, we don't really write on stone, but we use ultraviolet or UV light to write electronic devices onto silicon wafers. When writing patterns that have features smaller than the width of a human hair, a piece of dust floating by can really hurt a pattern. In the clean room, we use humidity and temperature controlled air that is filtered to remove dust particles to keep our patterns safe. Here is a simple schematic of how photolithography works. A polymer photoresist that is sensitive to UV light is evenly coated onto the surface of the substrate, typically silicon. Then, a mask is placed on top of the substrate to block UV light in specific areas. UV light is then shined onto the mask and substrate, and your pattern is written onto the substrate. The substrate is cleaned in solution to remove the excess photoresist and reveal the end pattern. Now, we will use the Vince facilities to design and write a pattern with photolithography. Here in the photolithography bay, the light looks yellow instead of white. This is because photoresist is sensitive to UV light. Since we don't want to expose the photoresist before we put the mask on, we use lights that don't have any blue or higher energy light so we don't expose our sample. First, we clean the substrate in a solvent bath of acetone and then alcohol and rinse in water. Next, the sample is placed inside the spin coater and the photoresist is pipetted onto the substrate. The spin velocity and acceleration can be adjusted using the human machine interface. Once the appropriate settings are chosen, the sample begins to spin. The centrifugal force from the rotation pushes some photoresist outwards, creating a thin film of photoresist on the surface. After some time, the sample is removed and baked on a hot plate to evaporate the solvent from the polymer. Now, we write the pattern onto the substrate. The mask is aligned on top of the sample using the mask aligner. A UV lamp exposes light onto the sample where it starts a reaction within the unmasked photoresist. Then, the substrate is baked to finish the chemical reactions from UV exposure. The sample is then removed from the mask aligner and placed in a basic developing solution to remove the unexposed photoresist. Finally, the sample is cleaned in a solvent bath and the final pattern is revealed. There are two different photoresists that can be used, a positive or a negative resist. Positive resists are diazonephthoquinone based, or DNQ for short. These are polymers that acidify when exposed to light via the Wolf arrangement and can be easily washed away by a basic developer. Negative resists become insoluble as their long chains cross-link when exposed to UV light, allowing unexposed resists to wash away. Positive and negative resists create opposite sidewall profiles. 
negative resists leave an overhang over the substrate. When material is deposited onto the substrate, the overhang leaves a gap between the resist and the deposited material. This makes it possible for a solvent to penetrate under the photoresist, dissolving it and lifting off material that isn't part of the pattern. Positive resists have a wider side profile, which allows the material underneath to be accessed and removed through wet chemical etching or dry ion etching. My name is Elena Kovalik, and my research is in nanophotonics. This is my chrome glass mask that I use with negative resist to make teeny tiny electrodes out of glass slides. The goal of my research is to use battery materials to create optical devices like screens that work at very low power and are much cheaper to mass produce. Hi, my name's Alice Leach. I'm a research assistant professor and my research focus is microfabrication. I'm using photolithography right now in a project in collaboration with the Imaging Institute. I use these transparency masks because the features on these resonators are about millimeters in size and these are lower cost than chrome glass masks. In the first step, I put down this pattern using positive photoresist. Then I electroplate copper into these features. Next, I use this pattern to etch into polyimid, which is a flexible substrate. Then finally, I repeat another one of these patterns using positive photoresist to create another layer of copper on the other side of the resonators. When I'm done, it looks a little bit like this. These resonators are used inside MRI machines to increase contrast and give better imaging results. Thanks for listening. Photoresist can also be exposed using the laser writer. A 405 nanometer wavelength laser exposes a sample pixel by pixel to create a pattern. This tool can create reusable chrome glass masks to be used in the mask liner. We also can make plastic masks using a photo plotter. Plastic masks are lower cost than the chrome glass, but are much lower resolution. After a sample has been patterned, we take it to the deposition and etching bay to add or remove materials. Thanks for joining us for photolithography and stay tuned for more videos on deposition and etching. To learn more, visit vu.edu forward slash V-I-N-S-E.